As you know, a 513 gear puts more torque to the ground, but creates less wheel speed, whereas the 370 has higher wheel speed, but I think the engine still has the power to spin them. So my theory is the 370s should do burnouts for distance better than the 513s. I don't think you can say you're limited by gear ratio in this thing. I'm not sure that the, the test won't be limited simply by my balls. <laughs> I think we need to go do a burnout for distance with the 513s, and then later on, once we've got it all dialed in with the 370s, try it again. I'm all for testing. Okay. <laughs> How's your fear? I think I'll buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> Driving, man. That was a good one. That was nice. Good distance. And smells so refreshing. I know. <laughs> Especially with the mix of farm air. That's right. It's pretty hard to dislike the muscle truck, though. Oh, yeah. Dulcich is playing around with all the fun stuff that's on the optional and never needs to happen list. I'm trying to make the mandatory stuff happen, but I think I'm going to cave in and do something fun, which for me is fixing this disaster between the thing where we swapped this engine in and out of a boat and the other one where we cut the fenders off and put them back on, the wiring is just a nightmare. I really want to fix this so that it's not only functional but also tidy and troubleshootable and stuff like that. So I think that's gonna be what I'm working on most of the night. I thought it would be a good time to show everybody the internet famous muscle truck. I don't know why people love this thing as much as they do, but man, I tried to sell it recently and people lost their minds. And so here we are actually working on it for Power Tour. And I thought you might want to take a deeper look. Here's the front suspension, which is all Ride Tech stuff. It's got Ride Tech strong arms, tubular control arms, up and low, and it's got airbag there, of course. Back here, you can see that it's got a step notch right there. Really not necessary, the truck's not low enough for that. I wish that we had just put a little C-notch in it and kept the top of the frame there. Here's the world's best exhaust that my buddy Chad Reynolds and I cobbled together from the scrap pile at like probably two in the morning, probably 10 years ago. It's got a set of mid-length headers up here and then it's going into three inch tube that steps up into what I think is a four and a half inch Dynamax race bullet muffler. And I think that one looks like it's about 12, 14 inches long. And then it just goes back down to three inch and goes straight to a dump. And you'll notice there's no crossover pipe or X. This is a straight through muffler design, hardly any packing in it. This is really the secret to the shriek of the muscle truck. Never has so little horsepower sounded so good. <laughs> This is the nebulous theory that brought us all here today. We're gonna find out if I can do a longer distance burnout with 3.7 to one rear gears than I can with 513s. It's a solid concept. I'm gonna have more wheel speed. The engine's not gonna be gaining RPM as fast. I should be able to go farther. I should be able to go past where Dulcich is standing. Check him out. That's the end of my burnout with the 513s right there. Almost phone pole to phone pole. So I've got to pass that spot in order to be victorious. I need him out of the way because this could get ugly. So I'm gonna say overall equivalent distance, more tire smoke, not as much flare. I think I matched the distance. It was about the same. You about the same? Yeah. Yeah, I had to keep the thing up just off the rev limiter and modulate it before I shifted. Okay. Yeah, I could see you boiled them a little hotter off out of the right. hole. Yeah. And then that once those radials get like that, man, there are some ball bearings, but it just went about the same. Well, that's pretty interesting. I actually learned something from that. It doesn't have the torque to keep it going. No. But I mean, that's still between two telephone pole lengths is about what you had. Yeah. So that's 220 yards, which is about what? 680 feet by my calculus. It's pretty good. Your yeah. calculus? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Hop in. Let's get out of here yeah. before we get arrested. So to keep it on the road, I put in this 318 temporarily, but at 400 horsepower, I don't think I can really call this a muscle truck. So I've got a 550 horsepower 408. This 318 is coming out. 
the 408 is going in. So what's the power combo on this 318? It's a 40 over block. It's got a KB167 flat top piston. That gives it about a little over 10 to one compression. Yeah. Probably close to 10 and a half to one with these heads. They're pretty nicely ported stock iron head. And what cam? The cam's a Comp XC268. And that's 224, 230 at 50, 477, 480 lift on a 110 lobe separation. It's a nice street cam, I like it. Hydraulic flat tab it. Yeah. yeah. And the intake manifold is a regular performer, which I ported out to match the larger port size of these 360 heads. It, it seems to work pretty good. So here's my secret to super cooling on the Mopar muscle truck. I took the stock shroud and reworked it for it. this a way oversized clutch fan. I think there's about seven blades there. Man, this thing moves a phenomenal amount of air. I want something that runs cool all the time and that does the trick. Okay, up, there we go. Wow. Liberty. Goodbye 318, it's been nice knowing you. Cute little 318. Normally this is the point on Roadkill Garage where we'd be calling it a day and going it inside, but our deal this time is that the guys from Hot Rod Garage rented the drag strip, which is about half an hour from here, and we really want to run this thing tomorrow, and so we're gonna to have to stick it out and get this thing done tonight, so the first thing in the morning we can drive down there and run it. All right, happy days, man. I'm surrounded by small block Mopars. Right here we have a Magnum and the old school small block LA engine. The Magnum replaced the LA series small block in, in the early 90s, and there are differences that might follow you up when you're switching from one to the other. Now, starting at the top, the intake manifold on the Magnum has vertical bolts. The LA has an angled bolts, so they don't interchange. The thermostat location at the top is in a different spot, so that's gonna follow you up on your air conditioner bracketry if you're taking it off the LA and attempt to put it on the Magnum. Now a Magnum from the factory has a different front cover. I've replaced that with the LA cover. That gives me the provision to put a mechanical fuel pump because I really like the mechanical pump over an electric. So this is the type of engine everybody says don't put in a truck because it's got a giant carburetor, which is probably too big, and it has a single plane intake manifold. Too much camshaft. I, I don't know if I can go with too much cam. I mean, it doesn't even feel like this is our first drive with a new engine because everything is just going perfect. Oh man, it's just cruising. 2100 RPM, 60 pounds of oil pressure, 160 degrees. Yeah, pretty nice. I'm not gonna really hammer it too hard at the drag strip. This is gonna be more of a shakedown. I don't wanna drive through the clutch off the line. With this. I am worried about that clutch. We still need to fix that. Yeah. The only thing I don't like is with the windows down, I get my hair in my eyes and it's kind of annoying. I think I might need to get a haircut so I can drive this thing. I mean, don't wreck the thing. I don't want to wreck it. I'd, I'd rather have more air in the tires if I'm going to drive it faster through the lights. That's crazy. It's, I'm telling you, I mean, I'm steering it like this up there, just trying to keep it straight. That's probably why. No, I don't think so. I knew you were going to say that. 10 pounds of air in, the, in slicks is real normal. They feel loose. You just have to ride it out. All right. <laughs> no, I mean, don't crash the thing for me, but I don't want to put more I'm, air in the tires. and have you wreck it for that reason. See what he's talking about. I think he might be driving it too much. 1458 at 92 miles an hour. Uh, That's a handling nightmare. He's going all the way down the track like this. What we're gonna do on this episode is a blow through supercharger on the truck. 
So the tech that you're gonna see is installing a centrifugal supercharger, showing how to blow through a carburetor, showing you the fuel and ignition modifications that you need to make, and the gauges that we recommend to use for the tune-up process to make it all work. So this is gonna apply to anybody who wants to use a centrifugal blower or even a turbocharger with a carburetor. The thing that makes this pretty unusual is that the engine in the truck is a stock long block. And so we're fighting really bad cylinder heads, a tiny camshaft. The only mods this has is an intake and headers. Now let's talk about the specific parts that we're using. This is a Procharger F1A94. I've witnessed these things making 1,250 horsepower. Now, if you were gonna do what we're doing here, you're probably gonna pick a cheaper supercharger, not one this far you know, up the line, but this gives us a lot of room to grow. But the other tech that we've got here with the whole fuel system and the ignition and everything, it's gonna apply to you even if you're using a cheaper blower. So we're gonna do the mechanical part of hanging the supercharger on it first, and then we're gonna get into the fuel system, then the ignition, and then the gauges and the tune-up. And in the end, I hope to take this thing to the chassis dyno and find out if this was really a good idea or a really terrible one. Either way, the tech is gonna to apply to you. You just might wanna start with a different motor than the stock 350. We hit our first obstacle already. The blower bracket hits the water pump, so I'm just gonna grind a little bit of that cast iron and solve that. I think that's gonna get it. Okay, blow our bracket on. Our next challenge is gonna be whether all the pulleys and everything line up. The other thing that's super cool about this Pro Charger is that it's got its own oiling system. You just pour oil in it to the proper level and you're done, which is great. Now that the blowers matter, we can do pulleys. So the replacement pulley for the supercharger has a serpentine drive belt for the blower, and it's got two V-belts, one of which should line up with the alternator. Boom. Stock pulley out, performance pulley going in. Okay. I detect the sound of super power. Drives pretty good so far. Yeah, a little rich. Really rich, 10 to 1. How come it's not fast? Because it has no timing, it's pig rich. Yeah. And we haven't done any tuning, changed the spark plugs, nothing. I know. But the carburetor's actually really good. Yeah. Oh, that's totally safe. That's not bad. Okay. That was running pretty good, all things considered. Sort of my anxiety is much less now because I thought the carburetor could be a disaster and it's not. Yeah, I'm getting a sense of relief after this shakedown run. I feel good enough that I think we can just hit the road and drive into West Tech though. Oh, it drives like a brand new car. So we're cruising the freeway and everything's going great. And then we watch our fuel pressure start to drop. And I'm like reaching out the window, trying to vent the cap and stuff. And the bottom line is we're pretty sure that the fuel filter is getting clogged. And so we pulled over and we're gonna try and change the thing without getting gas all over ourselves. Oh, there's hardly any gas dribbling out of there anyway. Yeah, kind of clogged. Okay, what are our odds it'll go more than 20 miles? I would put it at greater than 50%. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, fuel pressure's still good. Picking up crud through the tank. And just think, that means we're passing all that crud through our fuel pump, too. Yeah. Not good. No. Wow, look how much more fuel pressure we have. Oh, wow, yeah. Ridiculous. That was a really good fix. Ah, uh, good truck again. Yeah. Overall, the greatest thing about the FMT is its utility and reliability. It's making a horrible noise, Freiburger. Man, I can't believe it. It's been almost six months since I've had the Ford muscle truck on the road. What happened was we were shooting a roadkill extra and camera Chris was egging me on to do a gigantic burnout. And what happens? 
I blow the unblowable. The nine inch Ford in this truck blew sky high. We dragged it home and it's been sitting ever since. Freiburger finally ordered some new parts to fix the rear end and we're gonna take care of a couple of other things. Maybe the shifter, we need to build a trailer hitch because we're gonna take this thing and we're gonna use it for its intended purpose as a truck towing another project vehicle. There's a lot of sense in that. Stuff is broken bad. <laughs> Look at that. It's hard to turn the axle to line up with the bolt sometimes. Makes bad noise too. Doing the old brake drum axle puller tech tip. There we go. Oh wow. Someone RTV'd this thing on there good. Yeah. You might have to smack it. Wow. That's really stuck on there. I'm not looking forward to this now. Oh, that's not working. Right. Are there washers holding it on? Oh, uh, there are washers embedded on there. There you go. Here, prime them all off. Part of the problem is that these copper washers are on every single nut holding it on. They'll definitely capture it so the center section won't come out. There we go. Ah, naturally. Most of it hit the ground, it's okay. Ah, oh, what a mess. So I'll finish this up if you go put that U-joint cut back together and slam the drive shaft in and then we can move on. Yep. Now Steve's got the drive shaft handled and I've got all the axles and brake drums and wheels and tires. All that's left is gear oil. This is so easy to change gears like this. I used to do it at the drag strip. I would like bring a 456 carrier with me, swap out my 323s right there at LACR. I used to do that too, Fry yeah, Burger. Totally not worth it. All right, Dolchek, it's on you. Drive shaft is installed. I've forgotten about the majesty of the FMT. This thing just cruises. Well, you know, I'm really glad we got it fixed because I needed a multi-purpose truck like this that you can drive every day. It's really good. With air conditioning and looks stylish too. Which hooligans are laying all this rubber on your street? I don't know. It's ridiculous. Yeah. All right, ready to break in your new true track? Actually, I'm kind of afraid. Really? Yeah. That'll be fine. See? Nice wheel speed. Wow, pretty good distance too. Sweet. Oh, that was a little scary. No, True Track's good.